All right, from the Neller Center on the campus of Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts, Charter TV News presents live coverage of the 80th Clark University High School Basketball Tournament. Tonight, it is game two of the semifinals in the larger school division, Groton Dunstable taking on the Hudson Hawks. And hello, everyone. Again, Andy Lacombe alongside Kevin Wells. And coach, you've got the Groton Dunstable team plays in the same division, Midwatch B, as... Uh, the Westboro Rangers, who have just advanced, knows that team. But Hudson comes in very strong inside. This should be a good battle between these two clubs. Well, Hud Hudson is 18 and one. You know, the strength of their game, I think, really is their inside power. So, you know, you look for them to really take the jump out early here. Groton Dunstable, well coached. Uh, Coach Gillette does a nice job. They've been here. They've done that. They have a rich history here. It's going to be a great matchup. I don't know if we can come close to the first game, but it's going to be a great opportunity. We will see Tim Person, the big man for Hudson. Evan Cook doing things and may hit a milestone tonight for Groton Dunstable. We're back with a tip right after this. I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Be a friend. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Corriglia. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. Worcester Police releasing new information. No working smoke detectors and extremely cold weather made battling a fire even more difficult. A tractor trailer rollover caused delays on the pike in Auburn. About $42,000 of cocaine is seized from a Webster apartment. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. All right, welcome back. We're getting set for the tip. They've sped things up here at the Clark Tournament. Want to get us on time. There's weather coming in out there, out, uh, outside in Worcester. Starting lineup, Brian Scott, Joe O'Malley, Jared LeClaire, Connor Keegan, Evan Cook for the Groton Dunstable Crusaders, O'Brien, Noah Stewart, Tim Person, Joe Camerata, Cam White leading the way, a senior leading group for the Hudson Hawks, and it's Chris O'Brien with the basketball to start things off. Well, Andy, I think both teams have a lot of seniors that are in their uh, rotation. They'll see a lot of playing. You had mentioned it, the young man with the ball, who's in the kitchen, it's Evan Cook tonight, is going to be a real key for Groton Dunstable. Nice rebound on the weak side by O'Malley. And back out to Cook. Comes into the game just six points shy of 1,000 points for his career at Groton Dunstable. LeClaire. Kicked it back out to LeClaire for three. Hit it! Three nothing, Groton Dunstable, and they're out of the gates early. Well, not a bad start. Hudson earning a uh, opening round win over Grafton. There's O'Brien, he had a big game, a rebound to Evan Cook. Cook pulls up off the back rim. Brian Scott trying to keep it alive. It's in the hands of O'Brien. Well, right now, both teams just getting up and down the court in the first minute of play here. They double up, but somehow get it into Camerata. Spins around the big fella, and it rattles home. Well, nice job. He used the whole rim that time, but it's two points any way you look at it. Impressive guys in the paint, Camerata in person. Nice games in their opening round win. So Hudson settles down into their zone. Looks like a 3-2 with the wing going to the corner. Rebound to Camerata. Here comes Hudson in the transition. Ahead and stripped. Stripped away by O'Malley. They tried to find Cam White ahead of the pack. Joe O'Malley doing well to get back. Hudson ball, down a point. There's Mike Nataro Sr. 
His son, the assistant coach. For the Hudson Hawks, inbounding. Camerata, all net. And the Hawks have a one point lead. Well, the 6'6 senior showing a little bit of his mid range. Nice soft touch. Get it to Connor Keegan. Keegan, big fella going up. Off the iron, no good. Rebound person. Keegan goes in the mid six feet range. There's O'Brien. Well, again, up. up front, Hudson 6'6, six, 6'5. Six, six, yeah. Great trapping defense by Groton Dunstable, forced the turnover. That's why Keegan might be a big key here. And Gavel off the bench for Groton. They're big guys. There's Scott, Brian Scott for two off the glass. The aspiring journalism student at Groton Dunstable. Did a little extra work on Media Day. Yeah, I saw that. Doing the interviews in the classroom. Yeah, he's he's charismatic. Pretty impressive. By his own by his own declaration, he's charismatic. <laughs> They're a good group. This Groton Dunstable group. A lot of fun with them at Media Day. And Greg Gillette, their head coach. Longtime assistant at Groton Dunstable and has just been a, an outstanding head coach and leader in that school as well. It's a rare meeting between these two. Groton Dunstable leads 1-0 in their only matchup 10 years ago. I just glimpsed across up to uh, the coach's office high above courtside and I see the dynamic duo of Gramps and Paul Phillips uh, watching the game. Yeah. Paul Phillips, of course, uh, the retiring head coach here at Clark. And Gramps, with broad shoulders, has carried him for all of these years. All the way back to their days as students at Assumption, at Assumption College. Steal from LeClaire. Groton Nussel coming back the other way. LeClaire up, off the mark. O'Malley following, off the mark. And the rebound out to Hudson. Now it's Keegan in person colliding. Two big dudes colliding right there. Well, Keegan 6'6", six, six, and Person, as you said, is 6'5". Great hustle by both teams that time. Couple missed shots, and certainly an opportunity for the Crusaders. This group of Groton Dunstable athletes been playing basketball together a long time. Scott blocked by Camerata. Uh, great timing by Camerata. You know, kept, went straight up, got his hand on it, did a nice job. O'Brien with it. For Hudson. Three from Person. Rebound on the weak side to Evan Cook. And quick tempo ahead to Scott. And lost it out of bounds. Good job on the recovery. Looks like Cam White got back there quickly. Well, Groton tried to push, but I'll tell you what, the Hawks from Hudson did a great job in transition. Getting back on defense from the offensive side. Broughton Dunstable, man to man. There is O'Brien. Looking for a screen from Camerata. Person, a talented pitcher on the Hudson Hawk baseball team. Lost the ball there. Brian Scott knocked it away. It's out of bounds off Broughton Dunstable. Well, again, great defensive effort that time by Scott. There's Person. He is a good pitcher, man. He's, he works a lot of innings. For the Hawks baseball team. I've seen him on the hill a few times. Deep three. Off the iron, no good. Keegan the rebound. Well, the clock was about to expire. It's not a shot he normally would want to take. Keegan thought about it. Gets it out to O'Malley. LeClaire inside. Keegan got it on the run and hit it. Well, a nice no-look pass from the uh, outside perimeter. Dumped it inside to the elbow. Again, this Groton Dunstable group's been playing basketball together a long time. Connor Keegan told us this week that I just made the team as a junior. I had to like wait, wait my turn behind some great players. This Camerata going up for two, and I, I felt like saying, Connor, that's the way it used to be. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you used to not have sophomores and freshmen on varsity basketball teams. You had to be something unbelievable. Happens a lot more these days. Oh, travel. Uh, Evan Cook just took an extra step. That last trip down inside, Joe Camerata, the senior, with a nice job protecting the basketball 
using his left shoulder and then going up over the top. Nice backdoor cut yeah. and feed. Cam White, good feed from the big fella. A little point forward action from Hudson. O'Malley for three. No good after Hudson took the lead at eight to seven and gonna get a foul and he'll stay with Groton Dunstable. Nice job that time going inside out. They dumped it inside, the defense collapsed and then they kicked it back out. They just couldn't get it to go. That's Stark going up off the bench and off the mark there. Tim Stark, one of the key reserves on this group for Groton Dunstable. He's out on the point guarding O'Brien. O'Brien in the lane, lays it up and in. Well, oh, great job. He took it right into the teeth of the defense, beat him by half a step, went right up and over the top. Keegan. Stark back to Keegan. This is a three. Back iron no good. Good rebound by Person. Uh, Person just a great position rebound. 10-7 the lead to Hudson. Minute and a half to play here in the first quarter. Going to the hoop is O'Brien. Good defense by Stark. And they're tied up back to Groton Dunstable. Stark and Crusaders have some numbers here. Cook got tied up but gets it to Stark somehow and he's fouled. Little offense by accident mm -hmm. that time as he took it along the baseline. Cook lost control and then was able to just dish it inside. So two from the free throw line, a chance to cut the lead to one. This is Tim Stark, junior. The junior at Groton Dunstable at the line, missed the first. Played some good minutes and Jake Gavel's into the game too, double zero. Jacob Gavel had a nice game off the bench for Groton Dunstable in the opening round win. He had 12 points. So two key guys in off the Groton Dunstable bench. Get him Brian Scott and Jared LeClaire a little bit of a rest. Ten seven remains the score. Hudson with the basketball. Camerata trying to do that high low feed again and off the mark this time it's going to go to Groton Dunstable. Yeah, they do a great job. You know, well coached. They get the ball to the high post and that strong sign wing dives back door and they immediately look for that. Hudson stays in their zone. Stark on the outside to go inside to Keegan. Keegan trying to get in with the trees. He's one of them. That's just off the mark. Well, nice soft touch by Keegan but just couldn't get it to drop. O'Brien to Camerata. Camerata tried to feed a cutting teammate and it's out of bounds. He was trying to feed Colby Quest. It's a little bit too much, too much heat on that pass. 2-3, Hudson flattens it out now. They Gavel, were... nice feed to Keegan. The big fellas with a good interior pass. Well, Keegan went from the high post, just slipped down into the low post on the strong side, was able to keep his body in front of the defender, and then certainly just lay it in. O'Brien kicks it out, Quest for three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound, Person puts it back, no. And that's how the quarter is going to end. Rotten, Dunstable, and Hudson in a close one. The Hawks by one after one in the large school semifinal at the 80th. Clark basketball turn. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Well, let's recap that first quarter with the highlights. 
Hudson again, the dynamic duo inside that's gonna be really tough for Groton as the game continues on. But Groton attacking the glass. Great ball movement. So Groton has done a nice job of sharing the basketball as has the Hawks. Yeah. Yeah, nicely done. We're in a tight game. Let's go to Brenna Wilson, who's on the sidelines with us tonight. Brenna. Yeah, at media day last weekend, um, each team talks about the excitement and the legacy and tradition of playing here at the Clark Tournament. Now, Hudson, they said, you know, we, we don't really have that, that tradition and, and that legacy here, but senior Tim Person said that they want to change that narrative and they're here there and they're, they're looking to change that. Thank you, Brenna. He actually used those words, changed that narrative. And a lot of us looked up and said, whoa, this guy's going to be a senator or something. I mean, he, <laughs> this kid, this guy can really talk. Tim Person, a multi-sport athlete, smart young man. Maybe he's going to be Harvard bound. Well-spoken young man, no question about it. There's Cook. A lot of, you know, a lot of times at the media days, the, the coaches get up and say, none of these guys want to talk, you know, in front of the big group. But, uh, Coach Notaro said, I got Tim Percy, he's gonna speak, and Tim got up there, and it was, it was good. It was good stuff. We took notice right away. Well, it, it can be very intimidating, yeah, especially no question. for a young guy. It's intimidating for a 41-plus-year-old man like myself to speak in front of groups. It's a lot easier to speak in front of a camera when there's no one else behind you. 41-plus? Plus. 42 okay. in March. Wow, you're already doing that stuff? So, I mean, theoretically, you're 42. <laughs> 41 plus, please. <laughs> yes, nice that, pass that inside. Right. Oh, they're gonna get a foul. Camarada's gonna go to the line. Boy, I'll tell you, he keeps the ball high. Great pass. You know, it gets dumped in from right outside here. Goes up strong, and he, and he, uh, Gets two from the free throw line. Off the mark of the first one. Cameron is leading the Hawks. He has six points, three rebounds so far. Well, Andy, I will say that you certainly don't look like you're 41 plus. <laughs> you know, you look like you're about a 35 year old. I'll take so. that. I'll take that. There Thank you. There's Cook pulling up off the iron. He's got two points. Needs four for a thousand. And they're going to get a foul here against Groton Dunstable. Just their second team foul. First on Gavel. Brenna Wilson was in lockdown over there with Dave Tingloff for a while. He is the uh, Westboro football coach, but his daughters go to Hudson High School. Up strong is Quest, but no good. Good defense from Groton Dunstable. Here come the Crusaders the other way. Yeah, Gavel held, held his stance very good in the low post. Gavel, baseline off the mark. Fighting for it, Person gets the rebound. Person thought about it. Cut off by Stark. See, there's that backdoor cut. They go 1-4 offense, and when they get it to the elbow, they look to dive that strong side guard for the back door. Off the hands of Gavel, so it stays with Hudson. Clark Tournament on Charter TV 3 is presented by Unibank. Grant Dunstable in the first game defensively. There's a look at Hudson's bench. 13th tournament appearance. All-time record 5-12. and 12. So that's what Brenna was talking about with what the Seniors on this team said early on about changing their own history. There's a steal. Evan Cook coming the other way. Cook got it knocked away and they're gonna get a foul. I believe the foul will be called on Anthony DiCarlo. Be his first. There it is, right into your living room. There's DiCarlo. Yep. Right, Evan good, Cook's like, what, what? Yeah. It's kind of a good foul though, don't you think? You know, well, it's better. Give up the layup. Make him earn it. Cook makes his first. And 
hits his second. Three-point advantage for the Crusaders. He's just two points now on a thousand point clock. O'Brien to the hoop, off the mark, rebound O'Malley. Quick as a jet, just couldn't get it finished, had a nice, created a nice lane for himself. He's Cook. Cook for three, got it! And That's it a is. thousand points plus! And a six point lead for Groton Dunstable. The Crusader fans and their bench know it. Stolen away. Here comes Keegan, he's fouled. Oh, they're gonna say offensive. Greg Gillette wonders how that was called. The uh, crowd continues to applaud for Evan Cook. There it is, 1,001 as he tickles the twine. That's doing it with style right there. Absolutely, and of course being a Live on Channel 3, he'll have this for a lifetime to show to his own family. Person to the hoop. Oh, lays it up and in strong. Yeah, what a great move. Nice job showing his athleticism, taking it off the bounce. Yeah, really impressed with Person in that opening round win over Grafton. Of course, he was much larger than anyone else out on that floor. He's got a good matchup against Keegan today. Gets the rebound there. Now there's his baseball prowess, throwing it home run pass, but okay. somehow Hudson comes away with it. Gets back to person. Three, good. Drilled it, Noah Stewart is in the books. Cuts the lead to one. Back and forth we go, Hudson into two, three. Ron Dunstable working around the perimeter. Yeah. See, it's, it's really important that they get it into the high post to make things happen here. One move by Cook, pulls up and drills it. Well, now that he's got, he's, he was squeezing that ball awfully tight until he got his thousand. Now we'll see him unleash. He is loose now, nine points for Evan Cook. Brother Ethan played here a few years ago. Great character guy as well. Working the ball around in the hands of Person. Person up strong. Good defense by Keegan. He pulls it away. Cook dishes to LeClaire. Back to Cook. Stark in the corner. So now they're going, it looks like a freak defense here. Three from LeClaire. Rotten starting to feel it from beyond the arc. Looks like, six. looks like Hudson uh, was going man to man that time against Cook. Oh, offensive foul that time. LeClaire draws it. The 80th Clark Tournament on Charter TV3 is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. That was Colby Quest with the offensive foul for Hudson. Brought Dunstable gets the ball back, up six. Timeout taken by Groton Dunstable. Greg Gillette takes it. His team is up six in the second quarter of the second semifinal tonight from the Clark Tournament. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, Here's our message. Delete cyberbullying. Don't write it. Don't forward it. Think twice what you type. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Corriglia. Welcome back. 3.32 left here, first half. The number four seed is Groton Dunstable. The number one seed is Hudson. All the top four seeds advanced in this bracket. Really no upsets even in the other side. Uh, Sutton beat Bartlett in the small school. And the small school semis are tomorrow. We begin live at six o'clock. 
So I just got a text from Kevin Shea. Uh, you know, he just he loves this game so much. Yeah. They're in their living room watching the game on the big TV, and he's doing box out drills with his children. You know, it, it, he's just an extremist at I'll times. I'll tell you, Brady, Ireland, and Riley, all terrific athletes. Uh, they really, uh, they really, and they're they're big basketball players as well. There's a big steal. steal. Coming the other way, and blocked by Cook. Into the hands of Stark, they tie it up. It's gonna stay with Hudson. Well, Evan Cook got his thousandth point in the, earlier in the game here, earlier in the quarter. He's playing some defense here. Mike McCaffrey, the athletic director at Groton Dunstable, Brought a brick so they could record the game. A brick is what those of, uh, I can't really call myself, but those of them, they are in the production side. There's a three going down for Cam White, but you know, you don't record on a tape anymore. You record on what they call a brick. And McCaffrey brought a brick. He is tech savvy. Wow. One of the best in the land, Mike McCaffrey. There's a strip, stays alive, Cook. Knocks it down. Cooks will get to watch that highlight on the brick. Yeah, that's what I used to shoot. Bricks. <laughs> Bricks. Now, if you think about it, 15 years ago, Keith Woods was bringing us VHS tapes to record on. And now they're called Bricks. Oh, good call. There's a foul going against Groton. It is the third team foul, only the third team foul against Groton Dunstable. Into Chris O'Brien, the Hudson Hawks. Camerata. Great patience by the Hawks. O'Brien's gonna crank up a three and knocks it down. Tell you what, he got a little bit of daylight and he just zeroed in on the middle of that iron. Inside Connor Keegan. Grant Nussel making a big time effort to go in through their big guy to set up the offense. Keegan jumper. Bottom of the barrel goes. Yeah, again, great ball move. They go from the wing into the low post. They dump into the elbow. Wide open jump shot. O'Brien. Off the mark, and here comes Stark, coming the other way. They swing it around. The charismatic Brian Scott, off the mark, gets his own rebound. Goes up, knocked Great. away by SWAT team. Camerata. And then stolen by Cook. Camerata's looking for another SWAT. This time he got a piece of the arm, and he hit Cook. Trade high fives as they come back the other way. Good competitors. Yeah, a little bit of sportsmanship for sure. You know, up fake, and there's the great block. Not here, you're not doing it in front of me. Nice job there, but then they picked up the foul. Central Massachusetts, you know, you'd say Hudson, certainly a hockey school. I'm from Auburn. Hudson was the big rival back in the, back in the day. Certainly a baseball school. Football's had some runs, but Basketball, and this is what Camerata and Person, and you know, Person's a baseball player too, and some of them are, some of the other guys are as well. They're changing the narrative to bat and make this a basketball program. Mike Nataro's done a great job at Hudson. Broughton Dunstable matches up again, man to man. Nice. High ball screen. Swing it back out to Quest, off the mark. Tried to get his own rebound, kept it alive. Person has it. Al Hudson just doing a great job attacking the offensive glass, giving themselves a second opportunity. O'Brien swings it out. This is a three, could have brought rain. Rebound on the weak side from Cam White. Cam White, the last two shots he's taken, he's knocked down two trifectors. Person for three, no. Up and off the mark there. It's Jake Andrade, excuse me, a junior. Took that three before Person. Full good zone press by the Hawks. They go ahead, O'Malley to LeClaire. LeClaire tried to find Keegan. 
Broken up by a couple of guys, including Andrade. Cook open for three. Oh, did not touch anything but net. Now he had a lot of time. He really set his sights on the middle of that rim. Nine point game for Groton Dunstable. Shot clock is off here. We're gonna get a foul away from the ball. And it's against Hudson. So Groton Dunstable's gonna get one last look at it. Yeah, blocking foul. Ten seconds to play. The ball is in Cook's hands. Leclerc. Nice work down into Stark. Off the mark. Rebound O'Malley. Quick turnaround. No. Good effort there from the Crusaders. They're going to take a nine-point lead into the half over the number one seeded Hudson Hawks. And that's going to make Greg Gillette, and Matt LeBlanc, Matt Coppolino, and company over there very pleased as they head to the break. We'll see how pleased, of course, because Greg Gillette joins Brenna Wilson right now. Brenna. Coach, what do you guys have to keep doing to keep this momentum rolling? Uh, we're OK defensively, but we've got to do a better job uh, defensive rebounding. They're getting second or third chances, and we talked about that. And uh, we've got to put a stop to that, hopefully, after the half. Good luck. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, thank you, Brenna. She's up at halftime after these messages. Groton Dunstable on top of Hudson by nine. Second semifinal of the night at the 80th Clark High School Basketball Tournament. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank. Bank different. Bank unique. Member FDIC. Member DIF. Equal housing lender. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's easy to bully, but the really strong help others. Just say no to bullying. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. I absolutely love every minute of playing high school sports. And just the feeling of going into the locker room before a game and how cool it was coming out and the whole town's all around the field cheering. And, and it's just such a special feeling. Played basketball and golf at Auburn High. I was the captain of both teams my senior year. For me, I learned a lot because I played high school sports when I was in Auburn High School. I started back in March of 1997, and it was, it was a lot different then. I was the only person in sports. We were shooting on VHS tapes. I started in December of 2000. I was the assignment desk editor and the health watch reporter. I was also always a sports guy. But you get paid to do things that you love to do, and for us, that's being on a ball field or a basketball court or just being around sports. Our enthusiasm, I think, for sports is contagious, and everyone gets swept up in it. It shows, in, I think, in our overall product in our sports that everyone cares. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. Worcester Police releasing new information. No working smoke detectors and extremely cold weather made battling a fire even more difficult. A tractor trailer rollover caused delays on the pike in Auburn. About $42,000 of cocaine is seized from a Webster apartment. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. Presented by Unibank and the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. 
Groton Dunstable and Hudson, where Groton Dunstable leads 30 to 21. I'm joined with Quabbin head coach, Dennis Dextrader, and also committee member here at Clark Tournament. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yeah, always a pleasure to be here on the 80th celebration of the Clark Tournament. Yeah, you know, 80 years is a long time. What do you think makes this tournament so special that it's been able to, you know, withstand this length? Well, tradition and culture. It's the third oldest tournament in the nation. And um, um, I think any coach or player will tell you that sometimes it's, it's to their, in their experience, it's more exciting than going to the postseason. Yeah, you know, and you obviously with Quabbin have had many memories here. What have been some things that have stood out for you, whether as a coach or just, you know, as a, as, as a, as a watcher of the tournament sure. too? Well, probably uh, working with the Clark Tournament Committee so many wonderful uh, principals, ADs, and uh, it's really the committee that puts it together. It's a year-round project, and uh, what they do for the kids, for the student athletes, to give them a collegiate experience here is wonderful. And um, my, you know, my interest, and certainly one of the things that I enjoy is um, the camaraderie of seeing so many coaches from the past that I've coached with and against here, like Coach Woods from Groton Dunstable, who's here and has won four clock titles, and. Dick LaDuke, who's retired and in the Hall of Fame, who's won so many as well, and seeing the new coaches that are here as well. Yeah, and you know, how does the community kind of rally around this tournament, too? Well, I, I, I think, uh, you know, if you talk to a lot of the coaches, um, they're excited and the kids are because if you win the clock tournament, you're almost guaranteed a parade in your hometown. <laughs> and, and I'm not joking about that. And that happened to us many times. And um, I, I think kids look forward to it. And, 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 and it's so, so much a part of the culture and tradition of their communities dating back 80 years. And um, kids, kids really um, believe in that and buy into that. Now, Hudson's a team that you have seen this year, Hudson. Um, mm -hmm. Grand Dunstable, obviously a team that you're familiar with. Yes. What are you seeing out on the court? And what do you think we can expect for the second half? Well, this game here is uh, very interesting. It's a contrast to the, to the early game that we saw. Um, this is a bigger team going at it, and they're playing an inside-out game, going into the big guys and kicking it out. Um, the Westboro and Northbridge game was a little bit different with a smaller team and guards out there who are more penetration and pitch and kicking with the threes. So it's two contrasting styles of play. Um, but I think uh, it's going to come down to the wire in this game as well as it did the first game. Yeah, and then, you know, looking ahead to Saturday with you have – the style of the first game that we were seeing. So you have Westboro coming in facing one of these two teams. What do you think we can expect? Well, sometimes in basketball, it all comes down to the matchups and uh, where you see your matchups as being an advantage and a disadvantage. And um, of course, this is uh, two, two teams with some with a center, with some centers and some bigs out there who can play inside out and rebound very well versus Westboro that really has some dynamic guides who can move the ball around and they love that perimeter shot. So it's going to be exciting. And we all look forward to two teams with contrasting styles playing. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We'll have much more of this game after the break. Thank you. I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. Delete cyberbullying. Don't write it. Don't forward it. Think twice what you type. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Corriglia. Snow and a wintry mix is falling across central Massachusetts. Clouds have been out on the roads virtually all afternoon. The streets are also getting packed with snow, making for a slippery and slick ride home. Many are continuing their cleanup efforts into the late hours. The snow is heavy and firm enough for me to easily stand on this snow mound here. This type of snow can cause lower back injuries and joint fractures. The type of snow making cleanup harder for shovelers. When winter weather strikes, Worcester News tonight as you cover. People listen to us up in Gardner, Fitchburg, Lemonster, Auburn, Millbury, Grafton, Sturbridge. You know, we have uh, Oxbridge. Again, this is not Worcester. We just don't talk about Worcester. We have we met selectmen on this show that want to talk about town meetings. We're a very great community. All of Worcester County, the people that I talk to each day, that listen to me each day, that watch me on Charter, 
193 each day. You want to talk to me? I'd love to talk to you. They are the greatest offender of the pink tax. You guys ever heard of the pink tax? Mm -hmm. And they say on average, women pay an extra $1,351 every year just for being a woman. Yeah, don't preach to me about women and better treatment of women when you are basically sticking it to women when they buy your products. You're listening to The Jim Polito Show, your safe space. Welcome back. 30-21, to 21, Groton does to one halftime. The Hawks of Hudson came out firing in this one. Their bigs finding guys left and right. Cam White hitting some big shots. And so did O'Brien. Well, they really shared the basketball very well so far in the first half. No slight advantage, certainly going ahead to uh, Grot Dunstable. Grot Dunstable scored the basketball a little bit more consistency. They valued the ball a little more. They only had three turnovers compared to Hudson's seven turnovers in the first half. But overall, it's been a pretty good first half in terms of being equal types of play. And Evan Cook, 1,000 point on a three-point shot in this one. So back here courtside at halftime. Both teams back out on the floor getting ready. You had a wicked math equation for us in the first halftime show. What do you have for us? What do you see in the numbers now? Well, I don't know about a wicked math, <laughs> but... The point, in fact, is that, uh, you know, I, I had mentioned as we were going through the montage that, you know, Grot Dunstable only turned the ball over three times compared to seven times for Hudson. But you look for the conversions. Also, Grot Dunstable has six more free throws than, so it's a very close game um, overall. The shooting percentages are very close. We're going to review those shortly. You'll be able sure. to do that. But it's been a pretty good game. Hudson just hasn't been able to consistently score the basketball. They've had the opportunities. So in the second half, when they get the ball, especially inside, they definitely have a size advantage, in my humble opinion. Yeah, and they've they, got to get it inside. They are big. Both teams, neither team shot the ball all that well. 36% from the field. Three-point land, though, 40% for Groton Dunstable. They'll take that. And again, you mentioned getting to the free throw line, and that's what Groton Dunstable did. A little bit of the edge there for them. And uh, turnovers, points off turnovers, relatively even. It's a nine-point game. But, you know, it's just a shot going one way or the other from this being just a one or one possession game, I, I feel like, you know, one or two possession game because these teams are very close and very well matched, at least in the first half. Well, they just, I think that the Hawks just had some bad luck in terms of dropping the ball. They, they didn't put the ball through the cylinder when they needed to most. You know, so in the second half, some of those shots start to drop for them. Things are going to look pretty good for them especially on the inside. They've been getting the ball inside. We had talked about Andy, the fact that they go against the man-to-man to that 1-4 offensive set. They dump the ball to the high post and they have the strong side guard dive hard for that back door. And they look for it all the time. And if it's not there, the weak side forward is dropping down to set a stagger type screen and that guard curls right off. So. Good offenses, they just need to have some opportunities to put the basketball through the cylinder. Groton Dunstable, of course, real good, tough, tough, tough team. They've had a great year thus far. They've been a little bit more consistent. That's the only difference. 14 points for Evan Cook to lead all scorers and to lead Groton Dunstable. Joe Camerata leading the Hawks with six points. Chris O'Brien, Cam White have five apiece. Groton Dunstable gets the ball to start. We're underway here in the third quarter. Crusaders leading the number one seed, Hudson Hawks. So this time out, Hudson starts out, they're 3-2. They showed this early in the first half. They have guards, the guards go to the corners. Keegan, jumper, no. Rebound, Brian Scott. Scott, tried to put it back up. Deflected away by Person in the hands of O'Brien. Again, the smothering defense of the Hawks doing a great job of double teaming when the ball gets into that post area. It is yeah, tough to get anything off inside against this Hudson defense. They don't play a ton of guys, especially at the forward position, but they got some athletes down there. Good man-to-man -man pressure by Grot Dunstable. Great effort coming back our way by Cam White. Just could not keep it in. Helped up by LeClaire and his teammate Cameron. And Once again. Inbound. Sportsmanship, sportsmanship, sportsmanship. 
is that 3-2 zone by the Hawks. Trying to get that feed inside. Person takes it away. Oh, uh, Person. Person did a great job of wrapping around that defender in the low post. He was side fronting and just did an outstanding job. I was at the person thought about taking that one the distance. Is that their quarterfinal game? And here's a three. Off the mark rebound, Groton Well, if there was one critique of Person's game from his coach, his coach kept yelling, get the ball to a guard. <laughs> this is what Coach Nataro kept telling him. Oh, another swat from Camerata. Oh, well, Camerata timed that very, very well. He knew he was going for the reverse layup. Nice kick out. Leclerc for three. No, tipped away and in the hands of Camerata. Camerata's credited with three blocks. He's definitely bothered quite a few more shots. So two minutes have gone by here in the third period. The score is the same as it was at the half. No one has been able to score thus far. Another turnover. Steal by Groton Dunstable. They had 17 steals in the first game. Scott shot off the mark. They get the hands to Person. The point forward, I'll call him, because he's pretty good handle there for Person. Camerata. Spinning to the hoop, off the iron, rebound Person on the offensive end. Uh, right place, right time, Person doing a nice job of getting the offensive rebound for Hudson. Cannot get that one to foul, and a timeout is taken. Oh, Coach Gillette by not Groton happy. Dunstable. Greg Gillette's gonna take the timeout, his team still leads by nine, no points yet here in the second. Doors, every door is different. Every door, unique and each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place, a bank where we listen to you and find answers, all to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. Welcome back, we have coverage of the semifinals in the smaller school division. Tomorrow night, Thursday being at 6 p.m. 80th Clark Tournament on Charter TV 3 is presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. 30 to 21 remains the score. Andy Lacombe, Kevin Wells, Brenna Wilson lurking somewhere in the building. Shout out to the to Team Shea watching at home once again. You know, you brought it up in the first game, but uh, you know, this is the first time that we have uh, really missed our sidekick, Phil Robo, the yeah. statistician extraordinaire. You know, Phil texted me this morning and asked me who, are the, who were the four teams playing tonight and then tomorrow. He's kind of hinting like he's gonna show up. O'Malley off the glass and in. Using the bank after hours. Uh, exactly, a little bank shot. I don't know if he called that, but it'll count. Well, you never know with Phil. Oftentimes, uh, you know, him and his lovely wife, Jane, will uh, show up out of nowhere. That ball knocked out of bounds. Phil came to the last game you and I did together, the Holy Cross doubleheader. Absolutely. Earlier this year at the Hart Center. Somehow snuck in there. I think he took the four acre entrance in. Well, he still has his media yeah. uh, pass, I think. 11 point lead for Grunt Dunstable. Nice find to Keegan off the mark. Scott tried to battle for it with Person or Camerata. And here comes the Hawks, Cam e White. Evan Cook with a great pass that time. Person not enough on that three. And it'll come back to Groton Dunstable. 80th Clark Tournament on Charter TV3 is presented by Unibank. Coach Nataro not exceptionally happy with that three ball attempt. Now maybe not the best look they could have had there. There's Keegan, baseline jumper on net. 13 points, largest lead of the game. This is when Phil would be showing me the thumbs up sign. Yeah, Connor Keegan, nice soft touch right there. Good strong take to the hoop and finish from Noah Stewart. Stewart's got five. Yeah. 
Cook and very patient on the offensive end. For Grant Dunstall, they're going to get a foul on Cam White for the bump. Just the first foul of the second half. Mentioned Mike McCaffrey does such a great job at Groton Dunstable. The Hudson AD is an Acton Boxborough Hall of Famer. Jess Gould Winders. Here's a three from Scott off the iron. Hudson AD, Jess Gould, she's an Acton Boxborough Hall of Famer. So is her husband, John Winders. And she was a three hoops, a three sports star, including basketball. That information coming from the Acton Boxborough Propaganda Athletic Department. You can guess who that is. <laughs> There's a foul underneath. And they're going to send Noah Stewart to the line. Oh, you take a look here. He steps through. And the foul was before what might have been a travel. Well, nothing has certainly come easy for either team. Ten points in the paint for Hudson in the first half, six for Groton Dunstable in the first half. But nothing in the paint has been easy. I mean, you have to step around or through people or get hit by people. There's a lot of physical play underneath. Yeah, that certainly could attribute to why the uh, ball isn't going through the cylinder <laughs> very well, uh, often, rather. Here's Evan Cook with the ball, his team up nine. Well, again, we talked uh, at the half about the importance of Hudson scoring the basketball, you know, with the missed opportunities that they had. So far this half, they have uh, four points. Inside, tipped around and stolen to Hudson. Chris O'Brien coming back the other way. O'Brien going to keep it himself, and it's off the mark. Oh. Defended all the way by Gavel. And Groton Dunstable throws it away, coming back the other way. And it'll be back to Hudson. Hudson catches a break there. O'Brien threw that one into the hands of Joe O'Malley, and O'Malley comes back the other way. A couple turnovers going back and forth here. Cook, yeah. all net. Evan Cook with a little shake and bake. Cook's four of six from the field. Brought Dunstable by 11. 16 for Cook. There's a three coming the other way. Rattles out. That came from Colby Quest. Stark dishes baseline for Keegan. No, off the mark. Might have been partially tipped. Rebound by Quest. I don't know if there's a better name in the lineup than Colby Quest. I was going to say that. That's a you great know, name. Like, it is. It absolutely is. is it Johnny Quest was the uh, cartoon action figure. Quest shot. Rebound Stark. I Look. Oh, extra step maybe and comes back the other way. Well, I'll tell you what, if you think about this statistic, in the first half, there was a total of 10 fouls called. Mm. In the second half, the, or in the third quarter, there's been two. Right. So not, I mean, the game is going pretty rapid at a pretty rapid pace, not a lot of fouls. All three officials allowing the teams to play. Three off the back iron, tipped out. Here comes Groton Dunstable in transition. It's Keegan. Takes a bump and scores! Three-point play opportunity for Connor Keegan. Uh, what a great job. Again, he protected the basketball very well. You take a look at it here. Great outlet, off and running. Keegan with his left hand to protect the basketball and a right-handed lay-in. Good firm grip on the basketball, a chance to make it three. Off the front iron, no, and here comes Hudson. The lead, though, is 13 for Groton Dunstable. But as we've seen tonight, double-digit leads not safe in the Clark tournament. There's going to be an offensive foul on the screen. And that's against Hudson's Cam Time. White. Time out, Time Hudson. out taken by Coach Nataro. Groton Dunstable by 13 in the third. 
I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. Delete cyberbullying. Don't write it. Don't forward it. Think twice what you type. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Corriglia. All right, Groton Dunstable, 26th tournament appearance. All-time park record is 32 and 20, and the Crusaders have won five championships all time. Wow. Now they're working on Tim Person. I'll tell you that the, uh, the cut men and women on the training staffs, and it's almost like a boxing match these first two games. They are earning their money this season. They are evening. doing it. Person's good to go, he says. Ethan getting right in there. Camera off down there on the baseline. Getting a good shot for us. Joe Cortez taking a break from MMA fighting on the other side. Looking good down there. He's like a brick wall holding that camera. Dunstable overloading this zone, sending the weak side guard through. Cook, jumper. Oh, Cook refuses to miss. Well, big bucket right there by Evan Cook. Lead is 15. Quietly pulling away here is Groton Dunstable. Chris O'Brien kicks it back out to three from White. No. Uh, nice job again, offensive rebound, attacking the glass is Hudson. Joe Camerata. Person still out of the game. It took a while uh, to uh, kind of plug up, pack his nose apparently down the end. So, Coach Otaro's giving him a little extra break. We saw the good video of it and they are uh, He's getting a little extra break here as Camerata's at the line. Made his first. Sometimes that can uh, make it difficult, if, especially if you're a nose breather. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not always easy. Brought Dunsmoo, a chance to take the last shot here. Cook thought about it. Swings it around. Underneath the Keegan, no. A heave from Camerata off the mark, and we'll go to the fourth quarter. Rotten Dunstable on top, 40 to 26. Can the Crusaders punch their ticket to the Saturday night final? I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Well, Andy, let's take a look at the third quarter going through memory lane just minutes ago. Not an awful lot of offense going on in that third quarter. But Evan Cook, as we talked about, after he scored that thousand points, relaxed a little bit. Yeah, Connor Keegan coming alive a little bit in the quarter as well. He has 10 points now. Groton Dunstable has two players in double figures. Cook with 18 and Keegan with 10. Small school semifinals come your way. Tomorrow, live at 6, it starts with Sutton and Narragansett in a rematch of last year's semifinal. That should be a very good game. Narragansett, very impressive win in the quarterfinals. They look good. So does Hudson. Well, and, and Sutton, quite yes. frankly, had Sutton, an right. impressive win over Bartlett. Yes. They did. There's no question about it. Sutton had a big, big performances from the Grennan brothers, but then... The, some of the stuff that you don't see on the stat sheets from the big men 
They really did some work there for the Sammies in that win. Inside, Jacob Gavel. Took Get collapsing defense by Hudson, doing a great job double teaming in the low post there. Took a nice feed from Riley Curran, the sophomore. Gavel in there as well, so giving uh, some rest to some of the big men for the Groton Dunstable side. Keegan, a much earned rest. These referees are going to confer here. Uh, I think they were looking at the shot clock. Confirm it, 18 seconds on the shot clock, 7.28 left in the ball game. Evan Cook to inbound under the basket. Stark, Stark going strong off the mark, rebound. Hudson, here comes White the other way. And tried to connect with his teammate Anthony DiCarlo, couldn't do it. And it turns over back to Groton Dunstable. Just having trouble getting things going, getting into a flow uh, is Hudson. Baseline jumper, some contact there, but off the mark from Curran. Coming up on seven minutes here in the contest. Chris O'Brien going to the hoop. Off the mark. Just defended there from Joe Bushnell. Nice no-look feed, Cook to Gavel. And the senior Gavel making the most of some minutes here. Well, a great job in full stride. Gavel, the lefty, lays it in. Cam White to Person. Person trying to find some space. It's a, it's a scrum. It's a rugby scrum right now. The ball's still loose. There's no whistle. There's two guys on top of Person. Well, they're letting them play. We talked about that. Bushnell in the corner. He's got it now, Stark. Inside to Gavel. Gavel. So he took a step. Little physicality in this one. I'll take a look. He has a loose ball, and then uh, the ball kind of moves a little bit. I mean, if but that's a pin. That's, yeah, you got to sign Tim Stark up for rugby. He, he was right there in the scrum. Oh yeah. And against Person, who's six five. Yeah, it wasn't uh, featherweight. That no. was not a featherweight. Oh, O'Brien tried to make a great move, lost the ball. Thought he had some contact there, but it goes out of bounds. Groton does a basketball. That well, was a nice crossover, and then he just lost it. Cook feeds Gavel, stolen away to Carlo, flips it up in the air. And Keegan, it's out of bounds, last touched by Hudson. So now you got Keegan, Gavel, Cook, LeClaire, and LeClaire's coming out, and Brian Scott's coming back. And O'Malley for Groton Dunstable. There's Cook. Cook's got two men on him there for a brief second. Cook. Cook off the mark. And here comes Hudson back the other way. Great break. Stewart up and off the mark, but he is fouled. Nice job by Hudson getting the ball out, getting them in front of the Crusaders. Just couldn't finish, but he will get two. Great outlet pass. You get the foul on Evan Cook. It's his first. Well, regardless of what happens here, the seniors for this Hudson team have set a foundation. They've set a little mark here. Getting a win in a quarterfinal. If they can advance here, even, more, even the better. Camarano's fouled, but competing in the semis, they are setting a foundation for future Hudson Hawk basketball players to shoot for. This is where they wanted to be. Camarano's at the line. You know, there are uh, 
one, two, three freshmen that are sitting on the bench, so they're getting a taste of it. You know, and again, Coach Nataro doing a great job of, of exposing young men to what this tournament is like. And it's really important because it gives you something to strive for, something to shoot for. Camerata hits the second, he has seven points. Brighton Nussel's lead is 14 points with five to play. Keegan blocked, let's see. Did they get a jump or are they gonna call a foul? No, they get foul. the foul. O'Brien just not tall enough there to get all ball, I guess, and Keegan's gonna go to the line. Well, Northbridge led by 12 in the fourth quarter. Earlier tonight, Westbrook came back a furious rally to win that one. It would be a tall task for this Hudson team, the way things have gone, but Westboro literally wasn't hitting anything through the first three quarters, at least from long range. They made some big shots down the stretch, led by Jake Hughes. You know, and again, I, you know, I'm gonna keep banging the drum that uh, the biggest reason that Westboro didn't shoot the ball well was because Northbridge did an outstanding job guarding the perimeter. That was a heck of an effort from Northbridge. Rams, Rams weren't happy with the loss, and, and no one would be, but that might give them a little bit of a, a bump going into the districts. That one's out of bounds. Good Bro defense. Broughton Dunstable settling into a zone themselves right now with 4.37 to go. Timeout, Hudson. 4.37 left. The lead is 16 for Groton Dunstable trying to head back to the Clark Tournament Final. I'm District Attorney Joe Early Jr. and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. If you see someone getting bullied, stand up for them. You never know what a few words can do. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the Law Offices of Joseph J. Coriglia. Uh -huh. <laughs> Small school semifinals coming back on the first Thursday game. at 6 o'clock. Yeah. And we've got the 80th edition of the Clark Tournament going here. And a good one for Groton Dunstable right now. 44-28 the score. Joined informally there by Keith Woods, the former head coach of Groton Dunstable. Greg Gillette, longtime assistant for Woodsy. Coach still up, there, Woods. still up there, a history teacher, I believe, right, at Groton Dunstable. Yeah. He's a great guy, good person. His daughter goes here. He's a good softball player. Goes to Clark University. Is Will Manzi in the game, number five, a senior. Go inside to Scott, he's fouled. It's the fifth team foul. Manzi is a vocal supporter of his teammates from the bench. And so he's getting some, he's getting some good run here in the final four and a half. Manzi comes from a family uh, that is very athletic. So uh, there's a, a little bit of Genetic makeup there. Um, good kid, hard worker, and like you said, um, is just really into the, there's no I in team. Three ball coming from O'Malley. Drills it. 19 points to lead for Groton Dunstable. There's Manzi with the flowing locks there right at the top, defensively for Groton Dunstable. Camerata, little half hook. Person tracks down the rebound. Person, a three. Hits it. Tim Person. Nice soft touch showing off a little bit of his range. It's his first three. He's just got five points today, but ten rebounds. Great ball movement by Grant Dunstable. O'Malley for three, off the iron, tip back to O'Malley, kept alive by Keegan. Timeout, Grant and Dunstable. Greg Gillette calls the timeout. 
Going to just make sure that all, all their I's are dotted and their T's are crossed, apparently, here. 3.15 to play. Well, I think, uh, you know, I'm sure that he's going to be telling them that we've got to run offense. So we've got to get our sets ready, and then we've got to run the offense and execute. Take the first good shot you have. But what he doesn't want them to do is to be coming down the court and just showing, throwing up a shot willy-nilly. On the flip side, I'm sure you're going to see Hudson really extend the pressure, try to double-team the ball as much as they can. You mentioned it. Westboro came from behind. You know, it was a yeoman's task, and they were able to find a way to win. It certainly would be more than a yeoman's task for Hudson to come back at this time. But stranger things have happened. And again, I like the big guys inside for the Hawks. Well, Greg Gillette, if he goes back to the finals, he meets Westboro for the third time this year. And that is a... Uh, Got to be an intriguing matchup for. Very difficult to beat a team three times. And as a matter of fact, they could end up seeing each other in the district. So it could be four times. Just missed by Evan Cook. Nice job. Foul will go against Groton Dunstable. That will be the team's and so Hudson will inbound under the hoop. Brian Scott picks up the foul. Scott, a good soccer player for Groton Dunstable as well. And Brian trying to get around Manzi, he couldn't do it. So I don't know if you had a chance to see the t-shirt. Nice job. Oh, person, good strong take. He's got seven. This year's... Uh, 80th anniversary t-shirt that all the kids got are white, but they've got a little green and red in them. Oh. Yeah, so a little uh, Merry Christmas type uh, touch to it. <laughs> Evan Cook, nice job getting into the lane. Cook literally has not missed since the first quarter. Maybe the second quarter. Three on the way, rattles out. Person, rebound, foul against Grant Dunstable. Connor Keegan, I think, picks that up. And Keegan, or rather Keegan got the foul, but Person is, he has been getting work done. Got the nose plugs in there. We've had two bloody noses and a cut below the eye in our two games tonight. It's been a very busy night for the trainers here at Clark University. I stand corrected, Cook missed at some point in the second half, according to these numbers in front of me. That one is out of bounds, but he hasn't missed much. Six of 10, 20 points, six of six from the free throw line, two of two from beyond the arc, and six rebounds for Evan Cook, a complete game for him. Person tried to get around Keegan, good defense. Stewart with the basketball. Tried to find Quest. O'Brien, step back three. Off the iron, no. Rebound Manzi. Here comes Groton Dunstable the other way. Stark. Stark going to the hoop, no. Cook follows it up, and now he's got 22. Well, a nice job by Evan Cook following up that miss. Put it right back in. Hudson's going to empty the bench, bring their young guys in. Three on the way. Rebound by Person. And... Groton Dunstable are going to get a foul on O'Brien. And Groton Dunstable will empty the bench as well. And the crowd appreciates the efforts of the seniors on both sides. Sam Person in the ball game. Mike Suriel. Ben Chase. Marcus Bass in the ball game for, oh, and Jake Andre for Hudson. For Groton Dunstable, well, Charlie Willis has been in there. Here's Manzi. Oh, Manzi fired the three. Got it back. Good rebound by Willis. LeClaire is still in the game. 
just to guide the ship. Jared Whitby's in there, and Elias Geiser in there as well. Shot clock tickling down to 12. Leclerc going to the hoop. High off the glass, no good. Rebound. Comes back the other way with Sam Person on the rebound. And a foul, and it will drop. That's Ben Chase. He's a senior, and he's in the scorebooks here at the Clark Tournament. Well, take a look at it. Ben Chase takes it hard to the basket, does a nice job, again, of protecting the basketball, draws the foul, a chance for three. Off the iron, the rebound. Mike Soriel, and maybe tied up by Manzi now, still in the hands of Hudson. Three, goes. It's Chase. Boy, I'll tell you, big bucket for Chase. Two in a row. Manzi. Scheiser up and off the glass, no good. Here comes Chase, here comes Hudson. Got a man. Andre just missed it. Under 10, now under five, and Groton Dunstan is going to run it out. The Crusaders are going to the larger school final. 51-38. Groton Dunstable knocks off Hudson. They advance to their first Clark Tournament final since 2016. Greg Gillette and the fellas can celebrate for a day or two, and then they're going back to work to take on Westboro again. We're back with post-game reaction and wrapping things up when we come back in just a few minutes to the Neller Center. I'm District Attorney Joe Early, Jr., and I'm proud to partner with Charter Communications with our pledge to help raise awareness that bullying should not be tolerated. From local school students, here's our message. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Be a friend. We need to foster safe environments for students in their schools and communities. Join the anti-bully crusade. Take a stand to lend a hand. Don't be a bully. Presented by the law offices of Joseph J. Corriglia. Doors. Every door is different. Every door, unique. And each one tells a story. Open a door at Unibank and you'll find a unique place. A bank where we listen to you and find answers. All to help you write your unique success story. Welcome to the new Unibank. Please, after you. Unibank, bank different, bank unique. Member FDIC, member DIF, equal housing lender. Local news from Central Massachusetts for Central Massachusetts. Worcester Police releasing new information. Tonight. No working smoke detectors and extremely cold weather made battling a fire even more difficult. A tractor trailer rollover caused delays on the pike in Auburn. About $42,000 of cocaine is seized from a Webster apartment. Reporters in the field. And an in-depth local forecast. Worcester News Tonight on Charter TV3. Presented by Unibank and the law offices of Joseph J. Cariglia. Welcome back. Groton Dunstable is going to the Clark Tournament Championship game on Saturday night. They beat the Hudson Hawks 51 to 38. Brenna Wilson standing by with some of the Crusaders. Brenna. Coach, what does it mean to be heading to the finals? Uh, we're very excited. These guys have worked very hard for this, and uh, we knew we playing Hudson was going to be a, a very tough physical game, and uh, it's just, you know, it means everything to us at this point through the season to get there. And you play a team that you guys are very familiar with, Westboro. Yeah. What do you have to do to get that win? Uh, maybe get a little lucky. They're pretty good. The Doherty boys just hit big shots, and the kid Donovan made a huge shot for them tonight. Uh, they're very good. We're just going to have to grind defensively and, you know, try to keep the game low scoring and, and give ourselves a chance down the stretch. Awesome. Well, good luck on Saturday. Thank you very We're much. We're going to bring in Connor, Connor Keegan. <laughs> Just running away from me over here. Connor, what does it mean to be heading to the finals? Oh, it's unbelievable. Last year we got stopped in the semis, and just being in the finals, it's a great feeling. We got to play Westboro again, and they've been beating us recently, but I don't know. We feel confident we can beat them. 
Awesome. Well, good luck this Saturday. Yeah, thank you. And Andy, it's back over to you. Thank you. All right, Brenna, thank you very much. Groton Dunstable 51-38, Kevin Wells, and they were impressive really from start to finish. It's a very good Hudson team, good, strong, skilled guys in the paint, and Groton Dunstable able to overcome and, and, get, and get the win uh, in this one. So, you know, Groton Dunstable moves on. They'll play Westboro for the third time now this season. Let's go back to Brenna. She's got Evan Cook. Yeah, I'm with Evan. Evan, congratulations on your 1,000th point. Thanks so much. And uh, you guys are heading to the finals now. What, what does that mean for you? Uh, it's what we set out to do in the beginning of the year. We're so excited to be here. It's an amazing venue. Uh, we just worked so hard to get here, and we're so excited to play Westboro, of course, our league rival, and uh, we can't wait. Yeah, obviously it's a team you guys know. What do you have to do as a team to get that win? we got to play so, like, going to go the extra mile. They're very good. Like, they can shoot it. Like, we saw the Northbridge game. Like, they came back down. Uh, they're just an amazing team. I, very respect, I respect them a lot, and uh, I can't wait to battle with them. Awesome. Well, good luck on Saturday. Thanks so much. We'll see you there. Yeah, and we're going to <laughs> we're gonna bring in Coach Nataro from Hudson. Hi, Coach. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, Not what, good. What were you, <laughs> what were you seeing with your team out there today? I was seeing a lot of hustle out of my team. They certainly didn't quit, but Groton Dunstable is just a better team than us today. Right. Now, leading into the postseason, too, what, how, what, how does this prepare your team? Well, it gets them to know that we got to come ready to play each and every minute of every single game. Just be up. I mean, we had a little letdown to start the second half and couldn't fight, we fight, couldn't fight our way back. <laughs> um, your seniors, what does the senior team mean for, your, for your, this it group? It means a lot for this group. I, when I went over there eight, five years ago, these kids were in the toilet. And they stayed together, they've worked hard, and right now we're having a good season. Disappointed today, but we're 19 and two. So we're ready for the districts, and I honestly think as a coach, this is gonna make this group of seniors even more hungry come district time. Well, good luck in districts. Thank you. I'm sure we'll see you then. Thank you. We're gonna bring in senior Tim Person. Hi. Hi. Um, what were you seeing from your team out there today? Um, I mean, we definitely gave a bunch of effort. Uh, I mean, they're definitely a great team. There's no denying that. So we knew that we were going to have to come in, um, you know, play a great game to beat them. Um, some shots just weren't going, a few too many turnovers, but I'm glad with the effort and the energy that we brought tonight. Clearly uh, playing with some badges of courage here. Um, <laughs> what Leading into the postseason, what, how will this help you guys? Um, I mean, we're not going to play a team better than Groton come postseason. Um, you know, there's some great teams, but, you know, we've now played in an atmosphere like this, you know, with a team that's going to bring a lot of energy with some really talented scorers. So I think, you know, it's only going to help us come postseason time. Yeah, and then finally, you talked about changing the narrative for Hudson. Do you think you guys have, you know, created that push? Um, a little bit. I mean, we know that still there are, you know, not a lot of people who, you know, believe we can, you know, compete in this tournament. So that was kind of our biggest thing coming here this season, you know, prove that, you know, 18 and one and 19 and one wasn't a fluke. Um, you know, we did that a little bit, but I guess all we have to say is just, you know, keep following us postseason and you'll see that, you know, we're still not done. Well, good luck this postseason. Thank you very much. I guys, back to you. All right, and our thanks to the guys from Hudson for uh, taking some time there. Uh, after a tough loss, they did compete. There's no question about it. They deserve to be here. They deserve to be the one seed, and they ran into a team that was better today. Groton Dunstable, led by Evan Cook, led by Connor Keegan, some of their seniors, guys that have been doing it all year long. Well, and that's something that's really difficult is to, to go up against kids that have a history of playing in very difficult situations like this Clark Tournament semifinal game. A lot of pressure. Uh, Groton Dunstable did a good job defensively. Uh, unfortunately, Hudson had 15 turnovers to their seven, yeah. so that made a big deal, uh, a big difference rather, and I think that Groton Dunstable shot the ball better from the free throw line. Again, Hudson, as I said at the half, they just couldn't get the ball and score it. They had good looks, they couldn't get it to drop. So I think they're a much better team than unfortunately tonight's performance was indicative of. Yeah, credit guys like Joe O'Malley as well. He had eight rebounds uh, to go along with uh, five points for Groton Dunstable. They are headed to the finals. Westboro is headed to the finals. We got a good one coming your way Saturday night in the championship game. 51-38, Groton Dunstable over Hudson here in game two. Game one, the final was Westboro in thrilling fashion, 54-51 over the Northbridge Rams. And tomorrow we've got the small school semifinals. Our coverage beginning with Sutton and Narragansett beginning at six. 
p.m. Well, that's it for us tonight. We're back after a quick rest here at the Neller Center tomorrow for Sean Grady, our executive producer, Kevin Wells, and all of our Charter TV3 team here, Brenna Wilson and company. I'm Andy Lacombe saying thanks very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow from the 80th Clark High School Basketball Tournament.